What is good, ladies and gentlemen? So welcome to another SK Wealth Academy podcast, number 162. I hope I got that number correct. Sometimes I lose track of the numbers. So if there's a different number on the actual upload, then um, that is the correct number. But I believe this is 162. So before I get started, please do sign up for my free newsletter if you have not yet done so. That's available on my new site where you will always read my articles first. And that address is Malamalama, M A A L A M A L A M A, exactly how it sounds, malamalama.com forward slash WordPress. And that is the Hawaiian word for enlightened, enlightenment and wisdom. So hopefully I pass on some wisdom to all of you through my new site. And also, um, I guess that's the only thing I really want to say to open it up. So what is this podcast going to be about? Well, this podcast is going to be why all national university entrance exams should be abolished. And that goes across the board from uh, the well-known SATs in America, Scholastic Aptitude Test, to the notoriously difficult college scholastic ability test known as the Sunung in South Korea. So the reason and the interesting thing for all of you that at first you may say, okay, I'm not really, I'm going to skip this podcast because I'm not interested in academia or topics of education. I am going to tie the reason why this should be abolished to the economic lockdown. So uh, I'm connecting dots in a way I haven't heard anyone else really connect these dots, but are the most realistic way to connect these dots. So if you're interested in that, then please stay tuned because this entire podcast, I'm going to try to keep it under 20 minutes. So I'll get to that the second half of uh, this topic, hopefully by minute 10 or so. Now, I'm going to quote First of all, uh, Sina Kim, who was a Korean university graduate. No relationship to myself, and I know a lot of Koreans are going to hate on me for my take on the Sunung. But uh, Sina said, quote, most teachers emphasize that if we fail Sunung, which is, again is the university entrance exam, the national exam, the rest of our lives would be failure because the test is the first and last step to our successful lives. The sunung is the final goal and final determinant of our lives. We thought that if we successfully finished the test, then the bright future would automatically follow, end quote. So even teachers are spreading this garbage, absurd nonsense. And I know if you're a student in South Korea, please listen to this whole thing before you uh, say, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about because he grew up in America. So I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Okay, please stay tuned and listen to this whole thing because I actually would love to get the feedback of some English speaking South Korean students to tell me what they feel about my take on these national college exams. Now, I think it's absurd, number one, that teachers are... are scaring students and stressing them out to such a level to say your whole the whole rest of your life whether it's success or failure depends upon this one test because let me tell you something the the sk wap academy the 22 online course i'm going to take i mean i'm going to release hopefully within the next three months it should have been released in march but of course with these covid lockdowns it, it pushed back and delayed the launch of my sk wap academy but the, the whole development of this academy and the release, I would have released it 10 years ago had I taken the proper education path because there is not one pathway. That is, that is the one pathway to education is a total garbage narrative push by the ruling elite that want to control it, saying there's only this one singular pathway to education. And in fact, Real education will come through self-education more so than sitting in any classroom in any institution of academia. I guarantee you that because had I known what I know now, 
I never would have even gone out onto university. And some people automatically say, "Oh, you must have gone to a bad. You must have went to a bad university." Look, he can't even speak right. He can't even conjugate verbs and and nouns correctly, right? So uh, that was not the case. I went to what what is considered one of the most prestigious universities in America. And yes, I did graduate as well. So I would say I would have totally uh, skipped that portion of my academic career and just gone into developing my online SK Wealth Academy and would have released it 10 years ago. Uh, so in that case, because I, I felt like I could have accomplished what I'm going to accomplish in the next three months and it took me 10 years to develop this academy, could have done it without ever going to university. So therefore, obviously, then the idea of taking a national university entrance exam becomes entirely irrelevant. There's no need for it whatsoever. Now, there's extreme levels of stress because students are told this our whole entire lives. You are working to get the, the highest grade possible. And if you don't, and if you fail, then your whole life will be a failure. And because of this, now I read in 2016 that South Korea had the highest rates of suicide in any industrialized world of, from children of age 10 to young adults to age 30. So between the 10 year old to 30 year old age range, South Korea had the highest suicide rates of any industrialized nation in the entire world. And in fact, they were so high that it was the leading cause of death, which is absurd for all citizens between the ages of 10 and 30. And that was in 2016. It was nine consecutive years of being the uh, top industrialized nation of the highest suicide rates. And I imagine by 2020 now, it's 13 consecutive years because I really don't think that trend has pulled back at all. Even though we've had prominent politicians saying, hey, this is a problem. It's a problem that uh, students are uh, suffer so much stress because uh, of you know other mental health surveys that have been taken in Seoul. They have shown that the number one reason given for these high levels of anxiety and depression and stress that lead to suicide, successful suicides and suicide attempts, is the pressure of academic success. And of course, if they're beyond the, the age of academics, uh, like if they're beyond age 21 or, you know, you can go to postgraduate work and still be in school age 24, five, six. But if you're working, it's also, they said, uh, the undue stress from career as well. So that's the number one reason. Now, like the Sunung, as I said, is the equivalent of the SATs in America. I heard it's a lot harder than uh, like South Korean uh, high school students will look at the SAT questions and say, oh, this is so easy compared to the, the exam that they have to take. So perhaps, because I remember when I took that exam myself, I took it at age 15, so I took it a little early. But uh, even at age 15, I, I scored a perfect score on the mathematics portion and a near, not, not nearly a perfect score in the verbal section. But still, I think it was within the top 6% of the nation on the verbal side so combined it was like top maybe two percent or top it could have been top one percent of the entire nation my combined math and verbal score on that test now does that mean i was super smart because that that's how universities look at such a score right they will say oh this is to kind of a barometer for whether someone a young high school student will be successful at our uh hallowed institution of academia right that's how they look at these scores and i say that's absurd because number one i don't care if you scored a perfect score on those exams you scored a perfect score on whatever it's broken down to the mathematics the verbal portion if there's other written portions i don't care if you got a perfect score this definitely undeniably 100 percent does not mean you are intelligent and yet that you're one of the best candidates for entry into a top tier university even though that's the standard interpretation of top scores. It doesn't mean this. So why is it interpreted in this manner? It's interpreted in this manner because the national academic system in every single nation in the entire world is incredibly broken, is incredibly diseased, is incredibly delusional. So of course they're going to rely on a delusional metric 
in order to qualify candidates uh, and to identify candidates whom they believe to be among the best to enter their delusional institutions of learning. So again, like I said, uh, yeah, I think I scored in the top 1%. So I scored better than 99% of all other students that year. And I took the university entrance exam like two years early. I took it at age 15 and when I scored that score. And if I took it right now, I would receive a drastically lower score. I know that. I'm positive I would have a, receive a drastically lower score than when I scored on that exam, that national university exam when I was 15. Does that mean I'm dumber than I was at the age, but then I was at age 15. No, of course, I'm exponentially more intelligent. I am at least have doubled my critical thinking skills, if not tripled and quadrupled them, probably closer to quintupled my critical thinking skills since age 15. So the, and so obviously just through common sense, these exams are not measuring intellect, not even measuring critical thinking skills because none of these national exams, whether the SAT, the Sunung or any other national exam test, because every country has it, whether it's UK, France, Brazil, Colombia, uh, Libya, Kenya, Israel, I don't care. Every other nation has these absurd, insane national university exam tests that all high school students freak out about. And it, it, that only tests, uh, you know what it tests? It tests if you're a good taker and you have a good memory for cramming information and nothing more. And uh, if you're American, I think this was a TV show that also had different iterations in different countries. It's called something like, are you smarter than a seventh grader? And you know, people were so dumb that they would watch a seventh grader answer basic questions about American history, about the constitution, about mathematics, because about geometry, because they just learned it, right? So it's fresh in their head and they could recall it because they just learned it. And then they would ask the same questions to like a 30 year old, a 40 year old, or their mom and dad. And they're, you know, they would outperform in these particular questions, the adults much older than them, or even their parents. And they'd be like, ha ha ha, look, these kids are smarter than their parents. That is the most idiotic conclusion whatsoever because, okay, take those same seventh graders that you say are so smart because they're answering questions about topics they just studied, you know, which they should be able to answer. And then ask, ask, uh, topics about motherhood, uh, to, to all of them. And then ask topics about motherhood, motherhood to all new moms because all new moms will know all the right answers because this is the knowledge they just learned as a new mom. And then all these uh, seventh graders will fail all these questions about motherhood. So are all these kids that we just called, oh, they're so smart. They're much more intelligent than their parents. Now, are they dumber than their parents? No, because like I said, these are just like these exams don't don't test for real intellect. These stupid game shows are not testing for real intellect as well. And so that is the number one problem I have with many of these exams. Now, again, like I've heard the Sunung is much harder than the American SAT test. So I would likely perform even worse on that exam than I would on the SATs where I had to take both exams right now. So again, does that mean I'm dumber than I was at age 15? Of course not. And recently, a uh, South Korean student, when he was asked, uh, succinctly summarized exactly what is wrong with this whole focus on the Sunung uh, National University exam in South Korea. Because he was asked what he would like to do in the future. And you know what his answer was? He said, honestly, I haven't even thought about my future because my entire focus for the past several years has been on scoring high on this exam. So how does that benefit anyone he is not even thinking about his future you know so how how does this help this national exam system help this person reach his highest potential and in fact it does exact, the exact opposite by focusing on a stupid exam it stymies his potential it stymies even his discovery of what he really should be doing with his life or what his true talents are because 
Okay, think about this. All national exams, right? They ask all the same questions to, to all millions. And in the U U.S., it could be like 100 million students, right? <laughs> or tens of millions of students, right? Because it's 330 million. So there's at least tens of millions that are taking that exam every year in America. So it's asking the exact same questions regardless of what that person wants to do for the rest of her, his or her life. Why is that question, why is this realization important? Because certainly a national university or college entrance exam cannot test for a level of excellence and aptitude fairly and equitably across multiple career paths, such as music production, engineering, and medicine. Like ask uh, 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 an engineering student questions about anatomy, virology, immunology, biology, and I'm sure that engineering student will do terribly wrong and vice versa. Ask a medical student questions about um, electrical engineering or chemical engineering and I'm sure that medical student would uh, perform really, really poorly. So to merely blow off this concern and say, hey, why, why do high school students need to know what they want to do for the rest of their lives? That's what university is for. Again, that's because that's a narrative that has been crammed into our brains by you know who, the ruling class and those that fund universities. That's a narrative. So we just accept that as, as reality. But the reality is, okay, there are a lot of you know teenagers that are 17 or 18 when they enter university that don't know what they want to do and that's fine but there's a lot guess what there's a lot of uh, kids out there by the time they're 12 or 13 or 14 they already know exactly what they want to do for the rest of their lives like they know they want to become a fireman they know they want to go into music production so why should they not be allowed to pursue an education specifically tailored to meet their interests in high school the same goes for business but this is not allowed because you know why? Because any, many people will realize that the university level education is completely irrelevant for the purposes of their lives. And we can't have that because universities and colleges are businesses. And that will prevent people from wasting their money going into debt to get the high, uh, to get the best academic degree possible and go into the highest level of debt possible. Now, there's a movie called The International with Naomi Watts and Clive Owens. I recommend all of you watch it if you have not yet watched it because it's very revealing because I know that whoever wrote that screenplay really understood how banking really works in this world. Now, there was a fictional bank, of course, in the movie called the IBBC, the International Bank of Business and Credit. And they're doing business with China to sell missiles to third world countries to fund these to fund war and conflict all around the world. So an investigator that's investigating the IBBC for crimes is uh, wants to know why the IBBC is funding these arms sales. Because she, she asked along with Clive Owens that this really can't be a high margin business segment, these loans. So why are you engaging and funding arms sales to third world countries? And then she you know, rhetoric, I mean, she answers her questions, not rhetorical, because she answers her own question and said, oh, I get it, it's because you control the arms, you control the conflict. So the bank wishes to control the wars. And the man being queer says, no, 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 no. She said, silly girl, it's about controlling the debt that war and conflict create. You control the debt, then you control nations. And that is the bank's goal. That's the bank's goal in every single aspect. In education, they want to control student debt because then they control the whole student population. So unfortunately, top tier academic institutions goals are exactly in line with the goals that were revealed and exposed of bankers uh, in the movie The International because their goals are to control the debt of the student, control the debt, then they control the student for the rest of their lives. Now, when I went to school, I had friends graduating from school that graduated at age 20 with $100,000 in debt. That's absurd. 100000 even actually more. Because I remember one of my friends, she was telling me that she would graduate with over $100,000 in debt at age 20 from undergraduate education, which is just absurd. Now, I graduated from uni a long time ago, so I know tuition is at least more than doubled at the university I attended. So they're likely students now graduating from top tier universities, graduating with more than a quarter of a million dollars in debt. And by the time they pay that back, it's going to be well over $350,000 when you add in interest. So what kind of quality of life can you have when you're 
always be high, when you graduate behind the eight ball and have like have to pay off more than three hundred fifty thousand dollars. That is absurd. So if you wonder, okay, sorry, it took me a little longer. So I guess this is going to be a little longer than twenty minutes, maybe twenty five minutes. If you wonder what these economic lockdowns are all about, just follow the money, like we do with everything else. Are these lockdowns? What are these lockdowns creating for everyone except perhaps the 0.1 to 1 percent of the wealthiest? Because we all know their wealth has grown grown by hundreds of, of billions of dollars during this lockdown. So it's not a crisis is always used as a good opportunity to to build more wealth by these global rulers and billionaires. So it doesn't apply to them. But for everyone else, what are these economic lockdowns creating? You're creating massive amounts of debt, right? For everyone in the entire world, for billions of people. So common sense will tell you that the ruling class is putting billions of people around the world into more debt and some into considerably more debt. I would imagine some people have doubled or tripled their debt during this lockdown. With, with the imposition, by the way, these unnecessary economic lockdowns because they are imposing these lockdowns upon us uh, by selling them to us as like a full horseman of the apocalypse, doomsday, end of the world tragedy, whereas it's really nothing close to their false percep- falsely created perception of you know this virus to us. So for anyone that has not really looked into like how the methodologies behind a lot of these studies are being quoted to um, to rationalize like a second wave lockdowns, third wave lockdowns, I really, really, really urge you to go look into it because you cannot just blindly believe everything the ruling class tells you. If you go to blindly believe even doctors that continually lie about this narrative, then go look up, um, oh, there was a instance when they used to give uh, pregnant women a, a certain drug for morning sickness, but it caused birth defects. And everyone said, oh, it's safe, it's safe, it's safe. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was called, but look it up. So there are times when we are lied to all the time. Told things are safe when we, you know, doctors have no clue if it's safe or not. And then we're told things are dangerous when they're not dangerous at all. So again, or, you know, very minimally dangerous in response to their response uh, is just absurd. So again, the banker strategy, as I've always stated, is to control the people by controlling the debt. And if they put people into debt, then they control the people. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what the true intentions of these economic lockdowns really are. But again, if you subscribe to the National University exam model, yes, yes, I'm going to push my kid into getting the best grade because I want them to go to some prestigious school where they can be brainwashed even further. If you actually believe that garbage, then, or if you're a high school student and you believe that garbage, then I don't think you would understand what I just said about the real intentions of the economic lockdowns. Because if you subscribe to such a sick model of education that only grants prizes of admission into delusional institutions of learning, then you will likely completely miss the true intention of the economic lockdowns completely as debt creation, because that's what it is. It's more debt creation to control us. Okay, so that wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to support my content because my content is always shadow banned, you know, it's really interesting because I really don't post many things on Instagram, but I had one post because usually on Instagram, I'll get like, you know, I, sometimes I just scroll through just out of curiosity and I only get like 40 views, 50 views. But my last post for some reason had like over 1,250 likes. I don't even know how many views it got. So somehow it got through all the censors <laughs> like usually all my posts on every single social media platform are censored so if you like to support my content because they're t- constantly censoring me and you'd like to become a patreon please consider supporting me by going to patreon.com forward slash sk academy i throw a ton of, a ton of benefits only available to patrons at just five George Washington's a month. So $5 a month will get you a ton of benefits. So go check it out. Always remain intensely curious. And if you, it doesn't even matter if you're of high school age 
and you are about to take these university exams. I really want to hear your comments. Please comment below. And if you're from South Korea, let me hear what your what your thoughts about are about my thoughts about the Sunung. Do you think that's a totally absurd that your entire uh, life trajectory is based upon this one exam? I think that's so absurd. So uh, please do comment below. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, bless up.